to stop from when I was six years old or something. Not at all. All right. What's your? So you told me earlier that uh, you go by Captain Bird. Yeah. How'd you get that name? In, in, in my early boy days, when I was around six years old, my, I, we didn't go to school till, till we was uh, seven years. Then he dropped it down after a while yeah. to six years. Well, my daddy and this man went in, in a man's field to clean up his field, his lots and stuff. Here and, in Spanish Wells? Yeah. Uh, on Rosal's Island, that's where. Okay, okay, yeah, Rosal Island. Yeah. We got a, a bridge cross here, you know. Yeah. Um, so he came to his, his basket. He, he, he was staying his basket under the big dilly tree. It was Sapadilly. You don't know nothing about them. Okay, no. All right. And he called to find out where I was. And I was up where he said, he, he, then he looked up. Says you're wasting the bird. Says you won't let the bird get something. <laughs> I was up trying to find out a rock, a ripe dilly or a ripe apple or something like that. And you? that's where you would spend your time up in the trees. Yeah. Well, all that day, nearly most of that day, until around three or four o'clock in the evening, that 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 strike and come on. Right on. Yeah. So when were you born? 1927. Wow. On April the 10th. Fantastic. Here in Spanish Wells. Yeah. Did you have a lot of brothers and sisters? Eight brothers and four, four brothers and four sisters. Are any of them still living? Uh, yeah, um, I've got uh, Cecile, Nola, two sisters, and I got Glenn, Terry, two brothers. Wow, living! My goodness, all here on Spanish Wells. Yeah, right on. Well, and now you, how'd you make your living? You said you were a seaman. Well, when I went up to Wisconsin, when I came back, I used to do piloting through the highlands. I worked with um, Benjamin Mon Monchi with President of Bethlehem Seal Company. I worked with Lanes and Sons. They was out of Chicago. They was fuel di directors. Yes. And I worked with some oil people out of Texas. They was big, rich people, you know. Yeah, they, yeah. They, yeah. Did you spend a lot of time on the sea? Uh, well, I spent I, I spent uh, around 50 years on the sea. Wow, that's a good long time. Yeah. Did you see any big storms come over? We, I went through eight hurricanes. Wow. Not direct in the hurricane, a day behind it or a day in front of it. Wow. But any of them at sea? Did, were you at sea for any of those? Oh, every one, nearly. Wow. What was it like? <laughs> that Caribbean did get rough. Yeah, I bet. That gets tough. And you got to know, but we, we decided when we left Colombia, a little town named Santa Marta. That's, that was our steady run. Okay. We running in and we made a, a trip, three trips a month. Every 10 days we were back and forward, back and wow. forward. And, uh, When we left Colombia, the hurricane was nearly down there. But wow, that's low. We, yeah, we figured we'd get across on the Leah uh, Heidi. See, that was a straight course, a due north course, owing to the current. Yeah. You know, yes, you'd yes. have to shift a little bit. And uh, we decided we'd beach the boat on the western tip of Heidi, it's a, a bay there. Yes. And we figured we'd, we'd beach you there, if the hurricane caught up with us. Yeah. But when we crossed it, the hurricane come behind us and went down in Mexico, way down to the Mexican Gulf. Wow. And that turned around and come back up on the south side of Cuba and on the south side, on north side of America, right up through that Gulf. Yeah. And that turned, and then it got up to the end of Cuba and Heidi, that turned right out through the Gulf and went out to sea. What were the seas like around that hurricane? Oh, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I, I see I see one boat, I was on a wooden boat, uh, broke all the pieces. We had the, the, the forward house where the sailors used to sleep. Yes. And, and we carried, we didn't have, we carried about 40 drums. A diesel, we didn't have enough to go back and forward. Yeah. So 
when we left down there, we'd put it in the tank. And uh, I see it once see you hit that house and, and broke it all to pieces. Wow. How big were the waves, you think? <laughs> well, uh, it was 15, 10, 15, 20 feet somehow. Yeah. You, you know, uh, a seaman don't value all that kind of stuff. When you get into port, you go out to a bar and have a couple of beers, and that, that gets yes, it. It's all <laughs> in the past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been through some time. I worked home here. I, I cut five or six years, I believe, out, out of that. We run fruit from here to Nassau, from yeah. Spanish Wells to Nassau. Yeah. This was a fella that employed people and run boats for him. Named Captain Reggie and Pender. Reggie, okay. Reggie, Reggie, Reggie Pender. Yeah. And uh, in Nassau, I, I, I've been in two hurricanes down in there. One, we, I, I had a, a, a boat out of Florida. Um, but the, uh, the, these shrimpers, you okay, know, sure. they call them shrimpers. Yeah. Like what they got round here. Well, we went in in the river or in a pond, and we we tied her down to certain trees, you know, mm -hmm. and and uh, when when the flood came, it washed us way up in the dry land. Oh wow! We had to cut thatch trees, uh, these berry trees, and get the stem and put it under under the hull. Yeah, to roll it out to the water. How far? How far well, was it? I guess it was 30, 40 feet. Wow. <laughs> so, living here in Spanish Wells for 91 years, have you seen any changes? The main road on Spanish Wells only run down to 13th Street. From there down was bush, just like them trees over there. Yeah. What about with the environment? Have you you've heard about global warming and things like that? Do you well, think there's been any changes? No, not, not, not in the Bahamas. Um, in them early days, June, July, and August was always a hot month. Sure. Yeah, they was hot months. Uh, they used to say April was old woman's month. That meant old woman could go to sea in April. Oh, it really? Was so calm and, yeah. and good. But after, after years got the, the, the atmosphere looked like it changed. Mm. Uh, we we got in those days. In my early days, we used to get the wind would go round to the northwest. It stay out there and blow for three or four days, and rain sometimes three or four days. Sure. Since then, the wind goes round now and goes in the northeast. It don't stay in the northwest. Goes right up in the northeast and, and blows from there. I see. Things have changed a little. Yeah, yeah. it changed. And uh, how about with the fishing? Has it changed at all? Or the well, uh, the lobstering? Well, yeah, the lobsters, lobster has changed on the count of the fishermen that made it change. Uh, when when I was young, we used to go around the reefs and the shoal, what we call a shoal or a rocks or something, yeah. and, and spare the crawfish. But in these days now, they found out when the crawfish spawns. Yes. The fish round the rocks eats all of the spawns, oh. and the, 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 the crawfish ain't got time to, to reproduce. Make, yeah, produce. Mm, so, that's a pity. So they, they come up with these condominiums. Yes. And they set them all out over the banks between uh, Andrus and Cuba, all out over that bank there. Yes. And. That saves a lot of the crawfish. That's good to hear. Now, I worked, I had a boat, and I, it was a shrimper. I changed the, I, I done some work to it that, because we carried 10 to 12 men. And at that time, she only had room for two or three people because they used to shrimp and all the way go up around the eastern bananas and go eastern ba ba Bahamas and go down to South America. Okay. That's where they, they used to swim. Uh, but then they, they stopped and went crawfishing, but they had traps 
that they set for crawfish. A crawfish is different from a, 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 a crab or a lobster. Okay. A lobster has got two biters. A crawfish has got two long whips in the I front see. end that he protects himself with. Aha, uh -huh. I see, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, you got any tips for the young people? Well, I, I can tell you one tip. Give up marijuana, give up smoking, give up drinking and eat a healthy life, and you're probably, but it's the good door that keeps you. <laughs> yeah, I think so. You know your heart gets stopped any time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You never know your day. And you might get cancer. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. A lot of that going around. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty, plenty. So, thinking about politics in America, you been following the news at all about a... I got, I got that from five o'clock in the evening till nine o'clock at night. I usually go to bed nine o'clock. When I was on, I cut the TV off. Yeah. But any thoughts about what's going on in this world? <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole world's in danger. If, if they let North Korea do what they're supposed to do, they go blow up the world. I think maybe so. If the United States don't blow them up first. Yeah. We need a man with a cool temper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, lady. I believe I I believe uh, President Trump. He started out. He was so much uh, um, doing it uh, with, with uh, the, the government. They were crooked as as a bear. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I believe he's he's trying to bring it back, but I I don't know. Some people now. I, I, I'm a Republican. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you might be a Democrat. <laughs> and uh, one and the other won't give in to the other. It, That's a problem. Yeah. So, back in the days around World War II, what was it like here in the Bahamas? Well, when, when, I, when I went up to Wisconsin, when they recruited people from the Bahamas, uh, the white people went up to Wisconsin and Minnesota and worked on the dairy farm. The colored people stayed in Florida and worked on the fruit farm. All of the farmers that was out around here that used to farm, they quit. We had a heavy drought that year. It, it must have been about six months before it rained. And if all the grass was dried up, if you would have thrown a, a bottle down there and the sun shone on it, you would have caught it to fire. Wow. So why were the Bahamians going to the U.S.? Well, United States government and all the men gone, all the young people went to war. You so know what, what, what happened to sure. 4,000 or uh, something lost one time? So they would recruit Bahamians to come do the farming in the, in the yeah, States? Yeah, just to do the farming. Now, we, uh, we went, when the season was up in Florida, for. Citrus, you know, great fruit, tenure or whatever. When when that was up, the people come back. And uh, same same thing in uh, Wisconsin. But a couple of our men that went up there, they was young men. They married over in the states. I, I believe one come down to um, uh, Red Sox or uh, that what what that uh, call call that town. World Series. No, the Red Sox, where they live, uh, uh, what they call, what re represented the highland, the, the Boston. Boston, Boston, the re one met a girl in Boston, and he got married, and he stayed there. Another one, I don't know where he went, but when he got married, he stayed over there for years, and then he come back, and he went to have a co and live. Where's the most beautiful place on this island? Well, the whole island. The whole island. <laughs> I've been driving around. I can't find a place that isn't beautiful on this island. No, listen. When I was six years old, when the colored person lived in this island, the women, what no, no um, uh, uh, bathrooms in, in the house and nothing. All, all was outside toilets, hmm. <laughs> and uh, you bathed in a, a little tub or something and wash yourself off. But uh, after then, 
they imported, or oh, they didn't import, they came from Bog and the Bluff over here, colored people, and worked on the farm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And after that happened, the women used to wash their clothes in a tub and scrub board. Yes. And you staying them out and, and let the sun dry them. So this, this night, when they had the clothes hanging out in the lines, these colored fellas, they, they live right in a little point right here, so okay. right in the west side of the road here. And uh, when they got up next morning, all the clothes were gone. So it, it astonished everybody, so they, they went around looking, and they found out that these colored people had them where they live. And uh, that night, five or six of the men took their shotguns mm. and went down to the place and tied them off up on the roof, you know, up in the yeah, air. Yeah. And next morning went one, one colored man on the island. And that's why there's so few that's colored why, people here. That, no, that, that's why the highland got, they don't like colored people, mm. but they get treated better in what they do anywhere I've traveled. Mm. Colored people. Now, if you're, I've heard that in Spanish Wells, they're basically, uh, the Caucasian people are descendants from the English colonists. England and United States. Mm. The people that come from England, they come in a boat and they shipwrecked up on, on the north side of Ulfra. Okay. And some of them got saved, some of them got lost, I guess. And they come shore, and right at where they come in was a big cave. Mm. It's called Preacher's Cave. Okay, Preacher's Cave. Yeah. And uh, many years after that, People, some of the people from here came from Arbor Island, some came all about, but some, some grew up on, on the, I don't know, I, I can't give you no history of, of the great, great sure. people. So. so when you were a little tyke running around here climbing trees, <laughs> how many people lived on this island? 600. 600, and now? 2,000 or more. Wow, that's a big change. Yeah, well. That's on Russell's Island because okay. we got a bridge going, and a lot of the people building no homes over there. I guess it's 50 or more yeah. Americans got homes on this island, and Canadians is it, it, around the same thing. Wow. They come out, and, and, and you know, when they have them heavy snowstorms sure, up there, sure. when, when they come out and they get, get in the boat and go out flashing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's great. Yeah, but they do. So do we. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and I'll tell you one thing. If you never meet people in this life, you'll die in God of this world and won't know nobody. That's true. No, no, no. You got to meet people. Got to talk to people. Get to know. Well, that's what I do. I've been doing this at least a year. I, I run around my buggy. If I see people walking, I pick them up. If they want to go to the shop, want to go to the bank, want to go to the clinic, or, or wherever they want to go, I pick them and drop them. And I, if they give me a time, I come back and pick them up. That's pretty nice. You get well, to know everybody. You must know everybody on this island. <laughs> then I was six years old. If a woman was going to have a baby, I could tell you nearly the, the night she was going to have it. Wow. That's quite a talent. Yeah. Well, you, it was a small community, and you run around. There was no roads on this island, only what you made. The main road out there, what leads up and down, mm -hmm. that was six feet wide. Wow. We had a whole man named Joe Neely. He had a, a stick about three or four feet long, and mm -hmm. he, he used to break sage bush and fasten it round the end of the stick and go out and sweep, sweep the trash out the holes in the road. Wow. Were there horses back then? Uh, we had, no. Later on, we had a couple of horses here. And then, it wasn't no garbage collected at that time. People had lots back of the houses. The, the, the land was, I got, they sold land in, in plots like a acre or two acres. Yes. And they, they, they had fruit trees growing in one part. And I see. That, 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 that was the agriculture. Yeah. How does how does an island like Spanish Wells get its water? Water yeah. water is pumped from over on the Lufra. I see. And do they make it over there, or do they collect it with rainwater? No, 
that comes out of the ground, I wells. See. I see. Yeah. So why is it called Spanish wells? Well, Spanish wells, and years gone by, that's in the early days when the um, things used to run to Cuba, the, the what they call them, these fellas that used to go around. Uh, and rum runners? Yeah, no, not Boot a rum runner. Bootleg? Uh, well, no. Uh, it was, these people were up in Europe. Okay. And they used to come down to Cuba and get gold and stuff. And oh, on yeah. their way back, they'd stop the Spanish okay, and yeah. get water to, for the, the for watch. The trip. Yeah. And gunpoint, we found out that they are. Uh, Bared a, a big gun and gunpoint. It was a like a steel steel cannon. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that's what they would like. And uh, in my my days when I started to run boats, I brought one out of Nassau. They sure. had forts in Nassau, you know, where they sure. had. Uh, well, I brought one over in and put it on gunpoint. Uh, this man from Eng England. Uh, Lord Beaverbrook, I don't know if you ever heard of him. Mm -mm. Well, he was English. He was a rich man, and he, he was knighted as a lord, you know. Okay. So he came out here, and he won. He liked that point. Mm. He wanted that point. So people that was farming on it sold the trees, but they couldn't sell the land because mm. that was given to the the queen to the people for hour and hour. That was. Mm. That was commoners' land. I see. It's called commoners' land. Yeah. So you couldn't sell it. You couldn't it. sell it anyway. No. But he come out here and the people, I don't know how he got deeds for it, but he got deeds. And now he owns it. No. No. He's been sold twice since then. Hmm. It's a beautiful piece of land. Yeah. Yeah, right, that spit right heading out there. Uh -huh. Gorgeous, that beach. Yeah. It's an unbelievable. Well, on, on the south shore where that beach is, he went through the highland or, or through the um, uh, Eleuthera yeah. and collected all the big rocks and built a wall from up to the mainland right down around that. Uh, Governor's Harbor? Uh, no, no, from, from up this land up on, on the Eleuthera, the other point. Yes. He built a wall so it stopped the sand from washing I see, from the erosion. Yeah. Um, during the war, during the hurricane season, I can't remember which hurricane it was now, but anyhow, the graveyard what we had up, up to the upper end of the island, that washed out, skulls washed out, and people washed wow. out. And uh, it's island, the highland, what he got now, washed in two two places. So they filled that back in, and that's, that's all that. My goodness. <laughs> what did they do with the, uh, so you've got a, a cemetery on the island, I saw that, a couple of them. And uh, so washing the cemetery is washing out into the sea, what happens with that? Well, they filled that back in. When I was going to school, we, we had a half to moon off, but we had to tote sand from off the beach and fill that in. Mm. But we were glad at that break, you know, yeah. from going to school. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, the teacher, the teacher didn't know what uh, as smart, smart as what I was. <laughs> what was none on this island then? Yeah. This was a, a lonesome island. I can imagine. How often would a boat come? Well, we had a we had a mail boat. It was called the Handian. Okay. She'd run a weekly trip into Nassau and Arbor Island. The people that run it was from Arbor Island, mm -hmm. so they'd come here on Fridays and drop the people here one hour and went up to Arbor Island and come back on a Monday and pick up the people here and go into Nassau. I see. They, they made a, a weekly trip. Very interesting. Yeah. Hmm. But I'll tell you. You're happy with the changes here in Spanish Wells? Well, you know, they're happening all over the world. You, I, I watched the... Um, the, the tower, what they they built in the United yeah, States, yes. what was it called? The 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 World Trade Center. No, no, this this the I Freedom Tower. Yeah, Freedom Tower. You got it. And, and I, I, 
You know, every night now that they, they give out the world news, they give all the presidents and all the men that went to war and, and the colonel from the worst president in the United States and up till now. They give them everything. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, have you ever seen a hurricane come through here? Six, eight. When I was born in 27, we had a heavy hurricane in April. Uh, I was born in April, but the hurricane wasn't until way after August or September, but that was heavy. And what, what do you mean by heavy? Well, it blew, it blew much. We didn't have no record of, 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 of the wind at that time. What happened to the houses and the structures? Well, the houses were built on stilts. Okay. My daddy used to go out and dig the, the holes out yeah. and they'd get this odd natured wood and make ground pins to bolt onto the house. Okay. And a uh, couple of the houses, I don't know, about three or four or five, went on the side like they, they just twisted. And uh, never was any that blowed down or now was nobody killed on the island. Oh, well, that's good. Does, uh, so, but you, did you have warning that one was coming? Well, no. What, no radio? <laughs> that's what I figured. The first couple of radios come, I know we used to, me and another fella, he was named Andy, uh, we used to go around and sit in people's porch. They had a radio that used to run off a, a battery. Okay. And I believe it was a 12 volt battery. Could be. Yeah. It was a big size battery there. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'd get the news off of that. What was, it, what was the first sign that a hurricane was coming? How would you know? Well, the people in them days was very smart. They'd see the sky change, mm. and they knew it was trouble coming. The sky would turn black or dark blue, yeah. and they could take out the historic. That it was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And no no way to tell how much the wind was blowing. No. Yeah. My Did the sea ever come over the island? Did the ocean ever come over the island? No, not as I remember. Yeah. Now, Did it ever get high? Only up, up east there where the graveyard was, that washed out. Yeah. But never, no damage ever done. Mm. See, we got a reef that runs from down to Egg Island, about a 40 mile reef. Runs way up, up past Arbor Island. That's a big long reef. Yeah. yeah. And when the sea come into that, it broke. And then it leveled off and rolled in. So nice. that, that was a good protection for yeah. Island. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Well, we're going to be heading off today, likely for, uh, for St. Thomas. That's about a 13, 1400 mile sail. Yeah. Got any tips for us? Where, where, where you go ahead? Well, we're going to go north for about, uh, northeast for about uh, 150, 200 miles, getting the horse latitudes, and then we're going to go east for about yeah, six, yeah, 700. Uh, when you leave here, how you go get in the ocean? Good question. Um, if we have a high enough tide, we'll go out uh, Gun Point and go north. Well, you go out to Gun Point. And the big, the big hill out there is called Ridley Okay. That's a man that uh, went out there, they found him drowned there, and mm -hmm. they named it Ridley. He was named Ridley, and they called it Ridley Ed, you see. Okay. Now, you go out opposite that, and you head due north, or just a little bit above north, and it's a channel goes out there. Okay. Or different from that, you could go up around there's some other uh, reefs in and out, but you have to go up through them. Through and Devil's Backbone? No, you don't go up that far. Okay. You go to Bridgie Point. Okay. I, I don't know if that's on the chart. I don't know if it, I haven't yeah, seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's on the chart. You, you don't have a... Um, we got a chart. Yeah, what yeah, about going out, uh, going out west uh, and going around the, uh, the Royal Harbor? Well, this is a long way. Know that you you got a uh, ten miles from here going down, but then you got the same northeast wind bucking from yeah. from here up the way. If you could go out Ridley Edge Channel or or um, 
Bridge your point, channel. Yeah. You, 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 you say that. That time. Yeah. You right. say that, that uh, many miles. I don't know if if it were, one of these boys could pile you out there. If you, well, we got a good chart plotter. I think it'll be okay. Yeah, all yeah. right. Well, I think well, we'll go out that north channel. Yeah, yeah, you're much better than... You should say that that big... Do you got to go down, yeah. then you got to come go back. back. That's a long way. Yeah. 20 extra miles. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, from there, he moved from more or less runs southeast and northwest after yep. you get up the race. So... You might be able to save a little bit of it, you know. Sure, yeah. sure. Well, you, you know more about it. I don't I know about that. <laughs> we'll see. We've got a long trip ahead. It's going to take about eight or ten days to get down there. I've just had, had a friend of mine from the United States. He was in a certain church, I, I don't know, uh, Boston Mormon. It was... Um, some other church. Anyhow, the church sent, made a contract with him. He went down to Heidi and worked there two years. Wow. He worked around here. He was a smarty mechanic. He told me he worked for um, Ford for six six years. He worked for Chevy six years or something. Then he, he bought his own plant. Then he sold that out and bought a, a sailboat. And, and that's what he used to cruise in. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you have kids? Well, I have uh, three, a, a, a boy and two two girls. They live here on the island? Yeah. Yeah. My oldest, my oldest daughter, she, she's about three to 350 pounds. And she can move out yeah. herself. Now, the youngest daughter, yeah. she runs the Highlander shop up there. I okay. don't know if you've been in that. No, not yet. Well, well, you won't go today. <laughs> You'll soon be leaving, eh? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, all right, well, you know, it, it, it's great to meet people and, and get around with people and, and explain what you can, And but in my days, we didn't get no education. Mm. How much uh, education did you, were you able to well, have? Well, I only went to the fourth grade in, in, in school, but it was so tough in these islands, we had to get get out and, and help to work for, for money, because sure. my daddy had eight, eight children. Oh, yeah. And I see four laying down in a bedroom on a blanket with mumps and measles and stuff. Oh, wow. Four hours was laying down here one time. Wow. We, we had typhoid fever here. Really? Yeah. What was that like? Typhoid fever? Yeah. That was heavy fever that killed you. Did it a lot of people on the island get it? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't say a lot, but it was 10, 15 people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, any last thoughts to, to tell a sailor before he leaves port? <laughs> well, I wish you a happy, safe trip. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. the the, the faith. Well, you know, it's it's good to meet people and talk to people and, and, and explain, you know, your livelihood and this island is built out of fishing. Yeah. The white people started fishing. When I was uh, fourteen years old when I quit school or something uh, right after that, I went out in a little fishing snack. They had a lie well. And they'd catch the fish and put it in a tub and then bring it board to the boat and turn it in this live well. Mm. And we'd done that for many a year. Yeah. So after that, they started to get these bigger size boats and then it went up to big size sailboats with bigger wells. And then now they started this craw fishing. They don't do much fishing. Mm. It's a couple of the boats that does fishing uh, for locally they they take it Vietnamese like fish yeah so they take it into Nassau Harbor and sell it by the old sail it's a three or four boats that does that what's the best tasting fish here in the Bahamas well they say a grouper but it's according to how you plan that fish or what you do with it yes you you can put 
different sauces or something on the fish and make it taste much better. How do you like it? I, I like uh, I like um, hogfish. Hogfish. Yeah, yeah, it's a one that they cut that off in strips and put it in, in, in some kind of dip and then put it in the hot boiling oil. Oh yeah. And, and, and do it deep that fried, way. Yeah. yeah, deep fried. Hog snapper, the best in the world, I think. <laughs> I love it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when fish is done certain ways, you, you don't, you, you, you have to eat what you got. That's true. That's what I believe in. If I go home today, I'll, I'll make me a big salad, or, 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 or cabbage salad, and, and, and tomato, and sweet pepper, and stuff made up, and I, I'm satisfied. I make <laughs> mine. Good. I've got a lot of food, and my, my daughter cooks for me every Sunday. That's my dinner. Hmm. I've got a, the lady, she, she's my sister-in-law, and that, that's where I ran. I sold my house, I took the money and divided it in two parts, and give one part to my three children, and all a part, I said, now listen, that's all you go get out of your daddy, and don't come back to me for nothing else no more. If you can throw your money away or spend it how you like, but don't come back. That's probably good advice. Well, you, you know, you see what your children do with it. Yeah. Instead of fighting and arguing, if you you leave a will and, and, and you know <laughs> and argue. Well, that's you know, and it still gives them a little. They know what they've got, and yeah. they know they still got to work and provide for themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Kevin. Yeah. I appreciate it very <laughs> well, much. I Thanks hope, for coming. I hope we meet again someday. I hope so too. It'd be cool to take you sailing, man. <laughs> well. Ah. Uh, you know, we went from Nassau to, to, to Exuma, eh? We have. We did, uh, we did Nassau to Exumas about uh, three months ago. How, how far are you going to Exumas? Well, this time we're, we're not. We're going to go out, uh, we're going to go out basically on the 27, uh -huh. uh, and then all the way to the 65, and then down on the 65. So we'll, we're not going to go to Exumas this trip. Uh-huh. Well, that, that, I mean... It, Exumas has got good clear water. It oh, bright sure as does. a day, and Exumas is the best skis in the Bahamas to cruise. Yeah, it's beautiful out there. <laughs> Gorgeous. Listen, you want to uh, you want to have a sandwich or? Uh... No, 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 no. I've got a lot of food on. All right. I, I, I've told my, um, my daughter wanted to ask me how, how about your food. I said I've got enough for six, eight meals. <laughs> So, I, I thank you anyhow. Oh, my uh, pleasure, my pleasure, my All friend. right, okay. Well, let me help you out. Yeah, well. well okay. You got it, Chief? <laughs> You're about as limber as one gets for 91. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Yeah, well, you know, you got to be thankful for how you get here. And uh, you got to take yourself... You gotta take care of yourself after you get it. That's the truth. You really do. Yeah. No smoking and no drinking. No drinking. Yeah. I, I, I don't mind a person having a bear or something. Sure, or sure. Or a couple of bears. Yeah. But when, How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Good. This is our friend Matt, by the way. Matt. My name is Edison, but they call me Captain Bird. Nice to meet you, Captain Bird. I've been running boats all my life. Have you? Yes. Uh, besides, uh, I've been up to Wisconsin during the war, I worked on a dairy farm. Really? When did you go up there? That was in 42 when most of the men was going to war. Okay. Here, let's, uh, yeah, you mind giving a, give a hand? hand? Awesome. Yeah, yeah all right. Great.